why the Middle East was created. There is no Middle East, it's all Africa. This is the Middle East. The question of why is greatly avoided. But the how where the Middle East countries created is abundantly dealt with. Why and the how? It is from the how that the modern Arab countries came about that we will be able to answer the much avoided why the Middle East was formed. Who formed modern Arab royal dynasties and why? Who is the natural indigenous owner of the whole land? There was no Middle East. It's all Africa. There were no countries or Arab countries as seen on many maps today in antiquity. That is correct. But why are they there today? There was no Middle East. That is a fact. For thousands of years before the European uh, geography, Arabia was part of Africa. It is still part of Africa today. There is no thing such as the Middle East. It was then and is still now all Africa. We're giving the evidence and the proofs where you can find the evidence. Why would you call Madagascar part of Africa and the Middle East connected to Africa not part of Africa? There was no Middle East. But the most common media trumpeted position is that modern Arabs are members of the Semitic branch of the Caucasian race. They are very correct. Then we hear of a new race, Mediterranean race. Why? If you said they are Caucasian, why now say Mediterranean? The Arabic race is a term for a morphological subtype of the Caucasian race as used in physical anthropology, Arab identity, Wikipedia, the website given there. Who were the indigenous people of North Africa before the invasion by the Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs, and the Turks? They look like that. You can go to this website and study and many, many, many websites. Re recall that they gave it Mediterranean to do something about it, yet it's all in Africa. Why didn't they say Mediterranean meaning countries in Europe? Why is it critical that every African, a Mutu on earth, know this? There was no Middle East. It's all Africa. Because it is factual history. Why is factual history important? Because those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. This is all ours. Remember, we own all this. So the people that are enjoying the petroleum, the crude, the tourism, the history, do not own even anything of that. Most Arabic history is based on the Bible. But the real action is destruction of African civilization. We must stop this. Fossils of an ancient African woman were dated to more than 3 million years old. Comparing the biblical timeline, even the Quran timeline, even the Gita timeline to this is useless. It doesn't work. We are all much older than the fables of the Bible. It's time to wake up. Now, let us briefly digest the how the modern Arab countries were born and the why. Three documents are critical in understanding this. These documents are the British and Sharif Hussein of October 24, 1915. The Sykes-Picot Agreement, which was signed on the 16th of May, 1916. And the Balfour Declaration, a letter which was written and officially record, recorded as of 2 November, 1917. The simple background is the, about the Ottoman uh, Empire or Caliphate. The Turk Ottoman Empire 1299 AD to November 1, 1922 AD consisted of countries that were once ruled by the Ottoman Empire. These countries shown here of the 16th century AD. Albania, Algeria, Arabia, Armenia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Egypt, Eritrea, Greece, Hungary, Iraq, Kosovo, Libya, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, Syria, Tunisia, Ukraine, Lebanon, and Palestine and Jordan. But there's a history around all these names because they are not original names and of these lands. 
The Hussein McMahon correspondence stated that Great Britain was prepared to recognize uphold the independence of Arabs if they supported them against the Ottoman Empire. Go to this slide and see all the shenanigans of the uh, British. Balfour Declaration is a letter dated November 2, 1917, written to Lord Rothschilds, one of the leaders of the Zionist movement in Europe, stating that His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of the objective. But the letter was crafted in a very subtle, very double talk, split tongue manner. So these three are at the core of the formation of the Middle East. As of 1916, the caving up of Africa and the birth of the Middle East was set afoot. But it was uh, speeded up. Most of the wording of these agreements were deliberately ambiguous, but they involved agreements between Russia, Great Britain, and France, especially the sykes picot Agreement, planned how most of the Arab region under the Ottoman Empire would be divided to be ruled forever under the British or European as well as French spheres of influence after World War I. The vital question now is when was the Middle East formed because it did not exist here is your answer the in the late 1930s the british established the middle east command which was based in cairo for its military forces in the region after that time the term middle east gained broader usage in europe and in the united states with the middle east institute founded in washington dc in 1946 among other usage go to this and you find the proof. So the Middle East name was founded in 1930 and recognized by America in 1946. That's clear. So they did not exist. To perpetuate this entity they created, what did the British do? They installed the modern Arab royal dynasty and rulers. And they keep on supporting and changing those rulers. They imposed their royalty in territories that they had already taken out of the Ottoman Empire and divided those countries. However, the British took advantage of an already running political stratagem. Here is the system we must be aware of. Recorded by various historians, we read here from Francois Auguste Vetnant Mariette, our French scholar, archaeologist, geologist, and founder of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. How often do we see in Eastern monarchies? And even in Europe, European states, a difference of origin between the ruling class to which the royal family belongs and the mass of the people. We need not leave Western Asia and Egypt. We find there the tax ruling over nations to the rest of which they do not belong, although they have adopted their religion in the same way as the tax in Baghdad, who are Finns from Finland, now reign over the Semites. Outlines of ancient Egyptian history translated and edited with notes by Mary Broderick. You can go here, page 28, and find all that. Let's prove this a little bit with uh, the current Prime Minister of the Nation of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. There is his grandfather, uh, Nathaniel Milowski, was born in Russia. And that was his name. And they arrived in Tel Aviv uh, and changed their name when they arrived in Tel Aviv in 1930 to Netanyahu. You can go to this website we are giving here, and there is Netanyahu with his cousin, the Russian uh, president. It's clear, straightforward. Mr. Baldwin, another historian, draws a marked distinction between the modern Mohammedan Semitic population of Arabia and their great Kushite Hamites. There is the ruler, and there in Yemen. There, again, there he is. Who is the original and authentic? It's quite clear, it's straightforward. There is the Bedouin at Abba El Hassan, Jordan, 1918. So this is quite clear. This is how the Middle East has been populated with the people that are there today. The former, he says, are comparatively modern in Arabia. Clear, these are Europeans. Right? Clear, straightforward. There is Charles Hardwick, 1872, is telling us straightforward. They have appropriated the reputation of the old race. There, it's clear. The old race they appropriated from and they have unduly occupied the chief attention of modern scholars. Straightforward. There is Charles Chadwick, clear. 
Blacks in the Turkish rude lands have their identities stolen by the Turks. Yeah. And they are mulattoes after the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. So that is clear. And there is the proof. This is the portrait of original Arabs. As with the Babas, the Egyptians, etc., after the breakup of the Ottoman Empire, after World War I, and the granting of independence to those countries after World War II, the Arabs saw their identity stolen by whites. The Arabs spoken of here are the blacks who looked like that. Many the Turks and their mulattoes, the colors, and other mixed race. Thus, Egypt is the Arab Republic of Egypt. Syria is the Syrian Arab Republic. Libya is the Great Socialist People's Libyan Arab Jama Iria. Jordan is the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Go to this website. But the people that are there are from Europe and of Turkish origins. Why is it like that? Why was the Middle East created? Look at the maps taught in all our universities and schools. The Middle East is missing. This is the map they want you to know. Top of the range, first of all, is the fact that Africa is the largest and wealthiest continent on the earth. Master that. Africa is the largest continent on the earth. They say it's second by chopping off parts of it. Dr. Mumbi and many others have excellent videos and demonstration about it. They shrank the size of Africa by 14 times to diminish black power. This is Dr. Mumbi's video. Go to this website, study it. You can see that the United States, China, India, Europe, every other country can fit in Africa today. Tax rule. So far, we have made every effort to clearly prove beyond any shadow of doubt and with evidence and proof that the white and European like rulers and ruling elites in the former lands of black civilizations, North Africa, are not who they claim to be Arabs. They are not. They are foreigners. They are invaders. Specifically, those of Egypt are not Egyptians. Those of any country, North Africa, are not Babas. Those of Arabia are not Arabs. Those of Palestine are not Hebrews. Those of Lebanon are not Phoenicians. Those of Iraq are not Mesopotamians. Those of Iran are not Persians or Elamites. Those of Turkey are not Turks or Anatolians. They are all Europeans and genetically from Central Asian Turks. Go to this website to see that. Let us answer our critical question. There was no Middle East. But why was the Middle East created? Why? There was no Middle East. Why is the vital question to know? Why? Because the Bantu awakening is a must and the key and vital to our survival. To the shock of many, the caving of the Middle East from Africa was done to perpetuate the scramble of Africa. To eventually dominate and remove Africans from Africa by any means necessary. The Chinese invasion today, which is coming in the guise and tricks of economic investment, is actually a neo-colonial tactic of the same Central Asian techs who are likely to wipe us out of Africa. We must fight this. We must resist this. No wonder why the real answers to why the Middle East was formed are always hidden on the how the Middle East came about. This is Priest Rabbi LM Tubizulu. Subscribe to our channel, Hamiti Hebrew Ethics. This is our email. Reclaiming our birthright is clearly the reclaiming of the largest and richest continent on earth. Till we meet again, thank you. Siabonga. Tatenta. Goodbye.